Hello, and welcome to Stalker Escape from Pripyat. Um, I have not posted anything. Well, okay, I technically have posted um, something on YouTube, which was a um, part of a stream I did of this game. But officially, I have not done anything for this game, um, and I want to. Hold on a second. Um, it's, it's been something okay so this is this has been quite the trial and um i'll talk a little bit about it first i'm gonna go to bed all right we're gonna go to bed let me go to bed sleep till uh it's not dark anymore just like i do in real life <clears throat> this is my third attempt to um start a stalker series um I've been trying on and off to uh, get into some kind of stalker game. I tried uh, a mod pack for Stalker Shadows of Chernobyl, and that did not work out for me. And I tried another uh, mod pack overhaul for Shadows of Chernobyl, and that did not work out for me. And they, and they ended up being like two... Well, okay, I'll, I'll go through it a little bit. Um, I'm just going to kind of move on, and we're going we're gonna to have a little chat whilst I kind of go through the steps here. Eventually I will talk about the game, but I want to do a prelude. I appreciate your patience with that. Um, okay, I just want to make sure I got all my bases covered here. We, I need to drink some more. I probably need to eat some food before we, we take off. I'm going to be heading to the cordon. Um, anyone who's uh, played this game will probably not want to see me hang around in the, the swamps. So we are going to go to the cordon. Let me just double check. All right. Um, we do have a quest hand in there. Oh, no, that's not a hand in. That's a scout. Well, we'll go there anyway. Clear sky base should be good. Is this the... Am I going the wrong way right now? I am. Oops. My bad. So, um, the original version, um, of Stalker, or the first Stalker I tried to record was, I believe it's called, like, OGSR or something like that. It's, like, old, good, fashion, I don't know, um, Stalker, something like that. Maybe it's OGFS or something, I don't know. I can't remember. Anyway, um, that was a, it was a faithful, um, overhaul package of the original Stalker Shadows of Chernobyl. And I, I was kind of enjoying it, um, but the I, I hit a roadblock when I tried to use a car and the UI was in Russian. I'm sure that it was an easy fix, but uh, I wasn't enjoying the game enough to have to troubleshoot it. So I just kind of moved on to a different pack. Um, I moved on to a pack called Radiophobia, and I actually have quite a bit of Radiophobia um, recorded. I actually have several hours of Radiophobia recorded. And... It's not that it's bad, it's that I just didn't wanna. <laughs> um, it ended up being so punishing and difficult that I ended up not really enjoying it. Uh, will you sell me your sausage? There's an ongoing joke here. I'll, I'll buy your sausage. Uh, kind of tempted to buy your patches as well, honestly. What do you have here? Grooming kit, battery pack. This is not terrible stuff. You actually have a bandage? Buy your bandage as well. 545? I could use some 545. This item is too damaged to be traded. I mean, that's fine. Um, yeah, that's actually not a bad price. It's better to buy from individuals than it is from traders, I have found. Um, now let me pull out my map and see if I'm going the right direction. It's going to be a lot of walking for a while. Uh, this is a... You can consider this an episode zero. Even though um, I actually have played quite a bit of this game, and um, you might be all disappointed to find out that this is not, like, this is not a, a from-scratch playthrough of this game. I, I have been playing this game, and I can talk about my progress, but I'd rather, for the time being, talk about wh how, why it's taken so long for me to get to something like this. Um, the Stalker series, in general, has felt very intimidating to me, um, namely because it is pretty old and it's you know some of the tech is dated and some of it is unstable and it's kind of a mess um but you know it's I, I still have a lot of respect for 
a, a series that is as beloved as Stalker. And I mean, like, there's a world here that I've been really wanting to kind of uh, get a flavor of. It's it's um, difficult to even explain. I can talk a bit more about what Stalker even is, but for now, I'm just going to talk about my general experience. Um, so this is Stalker Escape from Pripyat. Are you a bandit? I can never tell if someone is a bandit or not. I'm sure someone is screaming at the monitor, he's a bandit. I would love to know. This is a clip. Oh God. Someone hit me right in the head. It's a good thing I just saved. Um, I am probably going to die here, but I want to see if I can't see who's shooting at me first. Incredible that I'm not bleeding right now. Wow, there's a lot of dead bodies here. These guys are bandits. No, they're, they're renegades. Renegades tend to be a problem. Now, was that a stalker? I can never tell. That was a clear, that was a stalker. God damn. Oh my God. The only person I killed was someone who was on my side. Um, yeah, so this is Stalker Escape from Pripyat. Um, it is a, a mod pack of Anomaly, which is another mod pack, um, which is uh, uh, of another mod pack. Like, I don't know. It, there's like several layers of obfuscation here. Um, but at the very baseline, the, the base root of all of this is a uh, Call of Pripyat, um, which is the third in the Stalker series. Um, some people will recommend that I don't start with this one, um, and instead start with something else. Uh, you, you feel free to let me know that again in the comments, but I, I you know, it doesn't really, it's not going to really make much of a difference. I have no idea if that was a bad guy or not. I do know that at the end of this, um, skirmish, it is going to be worth looting these bodies are you kidding me oh i have to reload he's in the bush then there somewhere he'll come back that was uh my bad Okay, there we go. Taking fire from thugs in the Great Swamp, west of the old church. I go ahead and save. And then we'll head in. Oh god! Well, that's a, that's a solid load from me. Go ahead and walk right into an anomaly. <laughs> this is good. Um, yeah, I've been really enjoying this. I've, I've put a few hours into this mod pack so far. Uh, it is a... It is an immense mod pack. There's like over 300 mods um, on top of this mod pack, and um, there's a lot of them are realism mods that add, um, you know, kind of immersion stuff. Some of them add survival stuff. Some of them add difficulty stuff. I've got things on easy, as easy as I could manage. Um, I really didn't want to make this game more difficult for me than necessary. Um, I can talk a little bit about why, but I think it's probably obvious. The game is, is quite challenging and, uh, you know, there's a lot of things to manage. Um, did I not get all of the stuff? Detached scope. There's a scope. What do you know? There's a scope. Oh, you're a clear sky. Oh, hey friend, uh, the danger is not over yet. I'm gonna wait till I'm like clearly out of sight out of mind and then i'll see what's what there's a ton of stuff here and i want to investigate it are you a baddie yo you have an exosuit that's a is that a mech hmm. 
So sometimes I play things like this where I uh, I run in and, and get shot at before I shoot someone because I don't like necessarily shooting stalkers. Uh, eventually, I will figure out who is who. So far, I know that uh, if they're wearing like a white suit, then they're probably a stalker. Um, if they're wearing a blue suit, then they're a clear sky stalker. There's a lot of um, there's a, there's a lot of factions. There's like ten factions, and um, you know, like it's it's a lot to manage, and they all have different stuff. So I kind of want to shoot this guy. I wouldn't mind grabbing his exosuit if possible. First episode I post and I'm seeing a guy with an exosuit in the swamp, no less. They have a tendency to be able to shoot through bushes. Oh God. Okay, that's them. There's probably another one somewhere. Okay, uh, I'm probably gonna I'm gonna load here. I might uh, bail from this because there's clearly a lot more of them than I thought. I was just gonna like walk over to the cordon, and meanwhile there's like freaking mercs in exosuits, and I. I did not really prepare for any of that, but I mean, if I could kill one and get their exosuit, it would probably be very profitable. Who knows? Could maybe even get an exosuit. But besides that, there's also like a ton of junk there I wouldn't mind grabbing. Okay, that's that was a nice clean shot. There's um, quite a lot to know in this game. I might, like, if there's interest in this series, I might end up doing a tutorial for a lot of the stuff in this pack because it is worth it. There's a ton to know, and um, it's it's just a really incredible pack. Honestly, I think this is, like, one of my favorite shooters that I've played in a long time. Do I have a bandage? I do. I, do I have a splint? I have a splint for my legs, but not for my arms. Oh, I do have one for my arms. Fantastic. You know what? This might be worth salvaging it. Okay. So I am going to go through this. Um, I might honestly do a pause here. Because there's a lot of stuff to go through, and I don't necessarily... Oh, never mind. God damn it. There's a dude. There's a dude with an exosuit on the ground. <laughs> I want that exosuit. I want the stuff on the ground, but there's so many du freaking... I don't know what happened to the church. I think the church got taken over. The church used to belong to the stalkers, and in fact, there was even a quest guy in there. Um, and that's one of the things that this mod pack does. Like, It's a very open kind of sandboxy world and people can just get killed and, and like major characters major characters can get like killed dead and uh you know it's pro kind of a problem i'm in a very good position here there's like a bush and cover so I can hide pretty effectively. Also, that guy in the tower roost is like drawing them to him. Can't really get a good sight on him. Okay, so that's that. I'm going to go ahead and save again.
Did my dude in the roost get shot? That would be a shame. He's doing a great job of drawing these guys out. Um, I'll talk a little bit about what I'm doing here in a, in a moment. Um, but the bottom line is uh, encumbrance is a problem. It's something you have to really keep track of. What I would like to do is, um, get back to my nice little bush and then save again. Actually, there's a dude here. I can also, oh, did I already field strip this guy? No, I didn't. Okay. Um, encumbrance is a problem, and it's... Oh. Oh. Where is he? I really don't want to abandon this, because there's so much good stuff on the ground. Come on out. Oh, there you are. Where are you? There's a way to re uh, unjam. Oh, that's that wasn't it. Um, I'll have to figure that out. There's a quick button to unjam it, and I have to try and figure that out later. My gun is very prone to jamming. Okay, it is finally unjammed. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and save as soon as so in the top left corner you can see a compass and that tells you you both um, how visible you are and also how much noise you're making the the little bar right now that's kind of pulsing that is my sound that's how much sound I'm making um, it, if you if you'll see a there'll be a, like another bar um, that like kind of increases over time in the bottom left of it and that is um, someone seeing you, basically. I think that's right. Um, there's there's a lot about this pack that I don't know yet, but um, that that is sort of what I have determined. I'm gonna absolutely run into encumbrance problems here. There's no question about it. Um, yeah, I've already hit my cap. Oh man. What do I even do in this situation? There's there's so much good stuff here. And if I leave it, it'll all be gone by the time I come back. I um, wonder if I could, like, disassemble some of this ammo. I wanted to bring some of it along. Uh, you know what? Let's drop this. That's probably a nice chunk. Nope, not even close. Uh, we can drop some of the stuff that is, like, dead. Um... Some of this stuff needs to be separated. I'll drop I'll drop anything that, that looks like it's almost destroyed. Stuff like this. Drop. Drop. There's reasons to keep it all of it. Um, but right now I need to prioritize being able to move. Uh you know what? Probably this military battle on battery is gonna be a lot. Also, what was that other thing I picked up? Um this. What is this? Exoskeleton frame. 13 kilograms. Use at workshops as part replacements. I should. I would like to disassemble this, honestly. It's not a good thing to do on this. I'm sure it's worth a lot. Um, but I got a bunch of metallic scrap and fasteners and stuff like that. Is this going to be heavy? Not as heavy as the battery, probably. I can move around again. So there's that. Um, field strip, remove all. There's there's a lot. I'm gonna I'm gonna save again. Probably not a good idea to do that right here, but I, I need to move quickly. Unload. So um yeah, I like okay. So what have you missed? I can talk a little bit about what you've missed in terms of like like what what have i accomplished i haven't really accomplished much i haven't completed any like major storylines um i i honestly have just been focusing on trying to get a decent gun together my gun right now is very um it's it's a sks modern 
and I will have to <laughs> I have to constantly remind myself like what am I even using oh that guy had a artifact actually I wonder if it is radioactive it is chemical resistance plus eight percent that's actually quite a nice artifact I might keep that uh, I definitely kind of want to grab this food for a specific reason I might actually head back um I might head back to the base I just came from, even though I, my, my goal for this episode was actually to get to Cordon, as I mentioned in the beginning. Um, but that is not going according to plan. My, my plan has been completely ruined. Um, but you, I think you'll agree there's good reasons to keep a lot of this stuff. Um, I'll talk a little bit about why. Um, just trying to move... We'll, we'll get back. I might do a pause, but, uh, you know, I think this is a good opportunity to um, have a chat about this. What, what even kind of game is this? I mean, like, the original Stalker Call of Pripyat is, as I understand it, did have survival mechanics, but nothing on this kind of level. Um, thinking what I might do is eat some food, because that'll increase my endurance. And then I won't have to, I won't move so sluggishly. We'll drink some water as well. Um, but this mod pack obviously adds like a ridiculous amount of uh, survival mechanics. So uh, one of those survival mechanics is the, uh, you know, I don't know if the original Call of Pripyat did that, this, but like the need to eat um, is a lot more, um, you know, it's a lot more detailed in this version. Um, F different types of food have uh, different satiation um, kind of effects. Some of them will make you sleepy. Some of them will make you thirsty. Um, anything, any food cooked from mutant parts. And I mean, this is a game full of mutants. Uh, don't know if you knew that, but there are mutants. Um, will have the uh, uh, ability to make you toxic. Um, so there's that to keep be aware of. In the bottom left corner, you'll see, um, first of all, like like I'm hungry, a little bit hungry right now. My encumbrance is up. And also um, my endurance is, like I can't even walk without my endurance taking a hit because of all the stuff I'm carrying. Um, I could potentially sell some of it to these lads, just a little bit of it. It's, as I say, it's better to trade with individuals than with traders, at least in this initial area. Um, let's see what you have. You have a thousand rubles. That's actually not bad. Well, it's, it's awful, but we can actually do something with that, maybe? I'll sell this dog tail. I don't know why I'm carrying that around. Um, do these have... We want to we wanna kind of deal with this ammo in a second. Um, I can't sell that. I can sell some of the ammo that I'm not going to use, like the 45... I'm not going to use 45. I might use some of the 9 mil. Um, I might use some of the buckshot. I have three weapons right now that I'm kind of swapping around. Um, oh, we can sell this battery, but you can't afford it. It's actually quite valuable. Um, I can sell some ammo. I probably should just sell some ammo. Empty syringe. We could sell some empty syringes. I'll sell the 9 mil because I'm not going to use the 9 mil. I'm not really interested in, in doing the whole pistol thing. I might. Um, I could potentially do it. Like if someone in the comments ends up, you know, trying to sell me on the 9 mil, like you should have a pistol. Pistols are good. Then absolutely go, go for it. Um, so I'll sell all of that. Actually wouldn't mind buying a Swiss Army knife. Oh, that one's like mostly used up, so never mind. Okay, that'll help a little bit with my encumbrance, but mostly it's just like I'm, I'm you know, trying to make a little bit of money here. Um, you'll also notice there's a ton of bars in the bottom left corner. You have like an overall health bar or condition, which is the person, like the, uh, the silhouette of a person that is like your general condition. Um, but then you have health conditions for every single one of your limbs as well as your head. Um, if those become damaged, then they can like generally affect your health um, they can also affect your endurance and your speed so if your legs get damaged and you can't move around as much 
um, obviously taking a hit in the head is very bad and it can you know lead to you know blurriness and stuff like that you can bleed out um, so we're, ta we're we're looking at some very intense um, realism when it comes to uh, damage how you how you get damaged uh, and also you know there's many ways to get damaged in the stalker universe there's uh, anomalies um, which are basically environmental effects that uh, will like blow your limbs off if you're not if you're if, honestly if you're lucky like that's like the, the the best thing that can happen in some cases um there's a ton of like really weird and nasty anomalies if you're not familiar with the stalker in general um this is a post chernobyl kind of fictional world um call it's it's a place called the zone and i can't tell you if the zone is like accurately if it accurately depicts the kind of geogra geography of uh, Ukraine, uh, or at least like the the major parts, like I can't tell you if Chernobyl is in a place that makes sense. I know that there are ma some major landmarks um, from the Chernobyl event, like for instance the Red Forest. I I know, I know of is a real place, but either way, um, the Stalker world is kind of its own thing. I definitely consider it um, semi fantasy, um, semi fictional. It's also based on a, um, a short story called The Roadside Picnic. As I understand it, The Roadside Picnic didn't actually have anything to do with Chernobyl. Um, it was just a, a little little fantasy, not even fantasy. It was, it was very clearly like kind of a post-apocalyptic uh, story about people who dive into the zone in order to get some uh, goods. And um, there are very... Honestly, it's, it's worth... I, I, it might have been something else I read. There's a lot of different, you know, um, pieces of literature that follow the same kind of uh, beats. But it's it, it, generally speaking, people die to uh, anomalies, and and there it's it's a very like cut and dry. Like you can even die from looking at them. Like at least in the original fiction, it was like if if you are in exactly the wrong place at the wrong time you could just like evaporate some stuff like that you know like it's it's a very cruel world the zone the soccer version of the zone it's a little bit kinder um but that being said i haven't ever gotten that far in it so uh, when we get closer and closer to chernobyl um then things will get more weird and the mutants will become a little bit more creepy um, there's creatures called bloodsuckers that are like invisible, um, which are, are really nasty. There's chimeras, which I've only really semi seen. Um, so I, I haven't really seen, like, I haven't seen them for myself. I've, I've seen other people um, see them. Oh, is this exactly the gas tube I need? I think so. It is. I'm going to buy this gas tube, my friend. You ha That was the last part I needed. Actually, I kind of need this part as well. Uh, I, I'm finally, I'm finally going to have my, my S, uh, SKS is, is finally going to be like kind of usable. Um, I've been like so far using my guns tentatively, uh, all of the part, like your guns get, have, a, a, have, um, they wear down and you have to maintain them. There's various ways to maintain them. Um, I, oh my God, 17,000. You are charging me 17,000 for this. Damn. Jesus. Okay, well, we're going to get some good stuff here, so I guess I don't mind. But holy crap, that's a lot. There's ways to repair your uh, outfits. Like all of these are parts from guns that I basically uh I, you know, I like I I like to rip uh, you you need to like rip stuff off of guns because they're much lighter. Than the guns themselves and as you have already seen encumbrance is, is like a major problem you really have to manage your your weight uh like is as much as possible um has so i i rip everything off guns um and uh and then sell that stuff and you can see it doesn't really add up to much but it's better than nothing um especially when the parts you need to buy are like you know Ex insanely expensive do we have a is that a repair kit no that's an upgrade kit and a tactical kit um what is this industrial grease i don't think that's what we want um are right, this above 60 percent uh condition is 57 so no 
So we're gonna buy these. I hate that I'm doing that, but it's gonna have to do work for us. Gunsmithing tools. Old gun smithing tools and accessories contains a pin punch, wheeler hammer, press tool, and black powder measure kit. I think this is uh this would allow me to use for recycling damage ammunition and the creation of better variations. This uh, this would allow me to make ammunition. That being said, I cannot afford that. But that is something that we want. We absolutely want that in the future. Um, you're welcome to, in the comments, let me know, like, you know, oh, I shouldn't have, you know, bought those things. There's way cheaper ways of doing that. Um, and I'm sure you're not wrong. Uh, I'm trying to just kind of get my SKS up to some kind of standard uh, in which it is uh, effective again and it doesn't jam on me every time. So we're going to go ahead and move that on there, move that on there. And now we have a uh, pretty, pretty well-maintained SKS. The actual condition of the gun is not great, but the parts are good. So that's, that's a, a huge improvement. Uh, I am going to go ahead and uh, unload all of the ammo from these magazines. Uh, you do have to manage magazines in this mod pack. You can turn it off, but I have opted to um, kind of just you know, go for the full realism. I actually really like the idea of uh, managing magazines. I think it's a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, it, honestly, the novelty of it is enough. Like, I, I have never, in, like, name name a, a shooter or AAA shooter where you've had to manage magazines. I'm sure you can. I'm sure they exist, but I haven't had to. So I, I kind of really appreciate the extra uh, measure of, of uh, realism there. So we're going to unload all of our ammo there. We're getting a lot of 9 mil. I will send it, sell the 9 mil because um, I'm not really using it at all. Um, let's see here. We are, are The ammo that we use are 545.39 and 762.39, I believe. Yes, 39 and uh, 39. Don't make the mistake I made and buy a 762, like 24 or some weird weirdo garbage like that because that will um end up costing you money for nothing so we can't sell the magazines there that means we have to go over here to sell the magazines there's two shops in this town and they both buy different stuff this guy will probably buy my artifact although i think i'd like to keep that artifact because um having extra chemical resistance might mean that i can eat food uh, that would toxify me without having to eat, you know, toxic, uh, reducing pills. Oh, this guy won't buy my magazines either. So I guess I'll just have to disassemble them or d donate them or something. I don't know. But he will buy my 9 mil. So I will sell all my 9 mil here. So this is 76225. If I could get that gunsmithing toolkit, that would mean that I could re, um, like basically disassemble these bullets and instead make the right kind, I believe, although I could be wrong, the 2.5 might be the measurement of the bullet or something. I'm not really sure. Uh, and you're welcome to let me know what it means in the comments. There's going to be a lot of, like, I don't understand how this works. Please tell me. Um, so this is a scope, Cobra scope, all Warsaw packed rifles. I don't know if this is something that would be useful to us. Um... Does he have a bear? He has an RF receiver, Giger, anomalous measurement device, no bear. Uh, he had a he had a bear um, uh, um, like tracking device, and I turned it down, and I regret doing that. Improvised application module. Don't know what that is. There's going to be a lot of times where it's like I don't know what that is, and I don't know what it does, and I don't think I want to buy that. So. Um, I would like to upgrade. There's a, you, there's a, it is possible to upgrade our backpack. That is something we're going to do. We are actually eventually going to do some quests and get to the cordon, but there's going to be a lot of downtime. There's going to be a lot of this. Um, I will be tempted to cut it out, but at the same time, um, this gives me an opportunity to kind of talk about some of the aspects of this game. So we're up to 15 K rubles. That's really not enough to do anything. Um, we can sell these parts. Those are the parts I pulled out of my SKS. They are no longer really useful. Oh, you will buy um, my extra magazines. It's not a lot of money, but it's something. 
we're at 50k of uh, 50 kilograms right now that's a lot of stuff to be carrying around all the time um it would be better if we could um downsize a little bit but i am carrying around a lot of tools so that's part of it so let me see here um can we use our cleaning solvent these are all tools meant for maintaining your guns except for obviously the uh sewing kit that's for upgrade uh, rep repairing your your vest but let me see i can okay so i can um use the cleaning solvent on the sks all of these are support items meaning if i use them as a support it'll add a bonus plus five percent so we can get it up to 72 percent and that is definitely worth it um, i'm going to try and get my sks up to at least like 90 percent um, that is something I've been kind of slowly working towards for a while. So you are missing the long journey that I have, uh, taken to, uh, to get to that point. But at the same time, um, you're also, you know, not having to endure that long journey because now I actually have a, a, a good gun. I've been really enjoying the SKS. I honestly wasn't, um, wasn't sure I was going to like this version of Stalker until I got the SKS with the scope because then I was able to actually start doing like headshots and stuff and that definitely helps. Um, so let me see here, 762.39. So this this means, um, th these are uh, recipes and this means we can, uh, we can actually make a lot of the ammunition. These are both, this tells us how to make both of these ammunitions. But I'm going to need the the exact freaking... We're going to need the gunsmithing tools. That's that's all there is to it. Um, universal weapon cleaning kit. Could consider using that as well. I'm not quite at 100%. Um, and I don't... I just used up uh, pretty much all of my solvent. Can we use this? No, we're good on that. Can we use this? Yeah. So I wouldn't mind getting our AKS uh, up a little bit. Our AKS, uh, I uh, my AKS has also been jamming quite a bit. This is an aspect of this game I also really appreciate. Like maintaining your guns is never something I really considered in a lot of games. Um, I am gonna need some more solvent. I wouldn't mind buying some more just uh just so that you know while we're out there because it's better to it's better to get the solvent um and i have i actually on my other monitor i have uh the manual opened for like how these different ones work so brunox is if your weapon is at 65 or above uh Dio dioka is for when your gun is at 75 percent or above and that's probably the best one to get actually so i could forego those other two and instead go with this because this increases your um your the condition by plus 15 percent the downside is that you have to really stay on that you can't let your gun fall below 75 percent condition um but the upside is that you you inc you get a lot more condition so as long as you stay on you know repairing your weapons it's actually uh much cheaper overall we could also look at trying to repair our uh our, our vest is taking a couple of hits um let's see here rifle cleaning kit what is this uh what is this one Base condition plus 15%, not usable below condition level 20%. Oh, wow. This one would have actually saved me a little bit of time and uh, headaches. But um, medium and large caliber rifle. But what I want is something for our vest. Glue tube. Used for repairing equipment. Basic condition plus 10%, not usable below condition level zero. So we could potentially use this. Base condition gain plus 6%, plus 10%, plus 8%. So we probably, if we want to buy something, we probably want this glue tube. And then there's this base basic sewing kit, which would also help uh, benefit us. This is something I haven't really done a lot of because um, I haven't really been forced to maintain my vest. But I would like to give it a go. Um... 
So if I use this sewing kit, I can... Yeah, okay. And then uh, what we can do is use this... Oh, okay. Apparently we can use the pseudo dog fur to increase the condition. So we're basically using our sewing kit in co co com combination with the pseudo dog fur. I'm sorry this is a lot of... For the first episode, this is a lot of maintenance and inventory. But um, I'm, I'm trying... I guess I'm trying to show off a little bit of the... Uh, immersive aspects of this game um, that could either put you off or um, convince you that this is going to be a bit more interesting but with all of that said and done i really would like to actually get going to the next part which is uh or the next uh to cordon i want to get to cordon um this guy has got a, a hand in real quick wouldn't mind buying some food from him. It's really not a good idea to buy food because it's always expensive. Uh, wait, the job is done. Oh, wow, 9,000. Very nice. Um, I'll explain what just happened there in a second. Um, would you sell me... Kind of wouldn't buy, mind buying, like, a tin of food. Let me see here. Where? Okay, this is, this is the stuff I like. I like the abacan beef because it's a nice chunk of calories. That's a lot, That may be the last time I buy food. Um, I'd rather eat mutant meat because it does, it is a more affordable. And um, I, I was, for a long time in this game, I was finding it really difficult to keep up with the demands of my character. Um, both the like physical demands of like feeding and, and keeping them watered, but also um, just, you know, keeping the, up with bullet demands like uh, there's just you, you, you constantly being uh assaulted by various creatures speaking of bullet demands i'm gonna have to load our magazine here i'm wondering i, I thought i had another magazine i might have sold it that might have been a mistake but it is what it is um okay is this one full this one's not quite full so what we do is we sort by ammo and we're going to go ahead and throw some more in there. Got to make sure there's always bullets in your magazines because when you reload your gun, you want your second magazine to actually have some bullets. Same for your SKS. Make sure there's some bullets in there. I like the SKS um, one for one thing. like you, It's nice to have one gun where you don't have to worry about magazines. And it's a very quick and easy to reload the SKS. The SKS um, is one of my all-time favorite guns in any game because it's generally speaking it has a very um pretty quick uh attack rate like the fire rate on the sks is is very fast for a rifle um generally speaking there is uh, a good scope for the sks which uh i i can't remember this the pu scope um and uh, I just like it. You know, it's accurate. You can get some nice headshots with it, and it uh, makes combat a lot easier. And uh, like I say, the scope is quite nice. So, yeah, I, I really like the SKS. Um, hence why I've been spending so much time and money trying to maintain this one so that it is actually usable. There was a time, uh, and I'm sorry you did miss this part. Uh, it was probably a pretty good part of the experience. You can watch my, like, the first official episode is the stream I did. It wasn't the first time, like, I played the game. I was playing very much, like, the, the you know, uh, my in-progress save. And, like, if this is popular in any way, then I, I would be willing to start a new series, maybe when I'm done this one. Um, but... There was a time where, like, my gun was constantly jamming, like, every second. Speaking of which, I would like to, real quick... Okay, I have the key binds open. Um, B, press, check, fire mode, double check. Uh, tap, B is double tap, switch, fire mode. So that's good. Let me see that, that in, in work. Uh, actually, probably more work better with the AKS. So, yeah, that switches AK, the, um, the firing mode. If I hold it down... Oh, just to press is check. It's, right now it's in full auto, and then if I double click it, it's in um, single. That's what I want to know. But also what is, okay, reload. Tap is reload, double tap is unjam. That's what I want to know. Uh, 
Um, yeah, there, there's. Like, you saw me do it. I was unjamming by right going into inventory and right clicking it. Uh, double tapping the reload button is much more convenient. Probably I should not be going this way. Because of all of the actual garbage that I have had to endure over here. Let's maybe check out this area. Let's go north a bit and avoid that whole zone over there. Oh, you know what? We could cook our food real quick. We have some uh, meat we can roast. This is probably not going to be very good. There are um, various things like tools and stuff you can uh, carry with you that make um, make your food end up being better. But also it just depends on the kind of food that you are cooking will will definitely create better food. So this one is mildly toxic and you do not underestimate that mildly toxic that will mess you up. That mildly toxic can actually kill you under the right circumstances. I actually almost died um, from from mildly toxic food. I had to get myself sorted out by a doctor. Um, I should I could at some point talk about this panel over here that kind of tells us about the conditions of our character. Um, but you know, I've done enough kind of chatting about the various components of the game. It's probably be better and more interesting for you if I actually killed something. But you know, I, I think what I like the expectations I want to set for this game um, are very much like this is almost in my mind. This is almost like a first person shooter version of Caves of Cud. Like, you know how Fallout was a very decent kind of CRPG or, or even ARPG. And uh, and then when they when it came became uh, when we revisited it and modernized it, we turned it into a shooter. I imagine that if uh, Caves of Cud was turned in, you know, modernized, quotation marks, it would look something like Stalker. Obviously, there would be a lot more fant uh, fantasy stuff going on, but that's, uh, you know, very much how I feel. Now, there's an arrow, a red arrow over there uh, isn't telling me, if you look in the minimap, top right, uh, left corner, um, there's a quest over there that is the mm -hmm. scout. This is a Fermi anomaly, so this is a very highly anomalous zone. Um, we can deal with anomalies with our good old-fashioned Mr. Bolt. Mr. Bolt is going to be very helpful for us. And it's going to tell us, Mr. Bolt is going to tell us where all the nasty, dangerous anomalies are. Good job, Mr. Bolt. I appreciate you every day. So we have scouted that area. They're usually scouting missions are, they have like follow-up, but not this time, unless this is scout. Okay, yeah, that's the next scouting area. I I, I highly appreciate this, the, the world that has been created from <laughs> this various like ridiculous levels of mods. Um, like it is full um, and there's like a almost similar-ish like to Caves of Cud reputation system and various different people have different uh, like reputations with each other. So there's actually infighting as well. So you'll like, you'll find like renegades are like fighting with clear, clear, sty, uh, clear, sty, clear sky stalkers and you'll find like mercs are fighting with, I don't know, renegades or something like that. You know, like they, they tend to fight with each other. Um, they have moods. Everyone fights mutants. No one likes mutants. Um, we may might see some mutants in this episode, but generally speaking, they actually feel a little, a little bit more rare to me than people. People are definitely more uh, valuable because you can, you know, grab their stuff, sell them. Also, just like grabbing their patches is great because... Some people will give you quests to like, I, I need 10 st patches of, you know, Renegade or I need 10 bandit patches because they just like hate bandits. Um, but I mean, like, what is this game about? Like, what are we trying to accomplish? Uh, there is a main storyline. I haven't really picked up the threads on it yet. 
so in that sense i think this is probably a good actual episode one um but like you know i've just been kind of sandboxing uh trying to you know get enough uh get get my footing you know like I, I started with very little and i've been trying to desperately to get enough weaponry enough bullets get to a position where i feel comfortable and also like figure out uh, is this a game i'm I actually what that's what that's not correct hold on a second uh hold zoom no weapon in hand quick melee is that quick quick melee tap ammo check double tap switch sights that's not right that's oh that's ammo check double tap switch sights that's not what we want either long press switch silencer Uh, what happened to my cool sight? That's a hundred percent not what I want. Detach scope. I'm gonna pull it off for a moment, and then I'm gonna try and reattach the scope. Um, gun. Put that back on there. Reequip it. Okay, that's not what I want, though. That's not what I want. Hold on. Lower gun. Long press is lower gun. Oh, double tap. There we go. Okay, I must have accidentally touched that button. So double tap mouse five was switch sights. I could see that being valuable at some point, but like for real, I'm always going to want that sight. Okay, um, we're probably going to want to eat some food pretty soon, and definitely I'm going to want to drink it. We should drink some water, like, now. I don't want to eat food until I absolutely have to. How are we doing food-wise? We could probably get away with eating our food. I would like to... This is, uh, I think, the first uh, artifact I wouldn't mind making use of. By the way, if you don't know what artifacts are, uh, artifacts are kind of why I'm here in the first place. It's kind of why anyone is here in the first place. Um, you know, this this place is highly dangerous, and there's not a lot of reason to want to, um, you know, redevelop this area. But there is a reason that people come here, and that is the artifacts. Um, the artifacts are created from the anomalies, like those weird environmental effects and uh I, I have a very bad tracker this tells me where an artifact might be um i haven't found too many i need to better get a better tracker that'll be one of the things i try and accomplish in this playthrough artifacts can vary in um quality and they also vary in effect um some of them can actually be very dangerous like if you have a an artifact that emits radiation it will actually radiate you and uh, eventually kill you if you're not if you if you're not wise to the fact that it's radiating um but some artifacts like the one i possess right now can have some really nice effects like give you resistance to toxification um which is nice so one thing you want to do is if you see a art uh, anomaly like this you might want to check out uh, is there an artifact around here doesn't look like it at least um, in this version, I'm pretty sure the artifacts are usually invisible until you're walking like right on top of it. So you do need the um, detector in order to to find them. So you know, worth noting. Also, um, I had to click on the my guide here, and that messed up a bunch of stuff. Hold on, just want to make sure, first of all, I like to have OBS open on my second monitor just to make sure that I'm still recording because there have been painful, painful mistakes made. This is an interesting bridge. I don't remember this bridge last time I came through here. I heard something, grunt. This game does not autosave. Um, I'm hoping I will not make the mistake too often where I... Uh, forget to, uh, to save but if i do i'm i apologize so i've scouted this area this area can very likely have some baddies in it so 
But why am I approaching it? I don't know. It's the call to adventure, you know? I love the environments in this game. They they feel very real, you know? Oh, can't climb this? That's weird. There is an odd thing where there was like an original anomaly map and uh, there's a bunch of there was a bunch of stuff like you know put in that map um and then baked into it so if you play the original anomaly they will have some kind of effect or they'll have something you can grab or you know like there's a bunch of you know they, they have like something um but then for this package of the of the anomaly uh they like they got transferred over in a, like a, a baked like they got kind of got baked in but without any function so you'll sometimes see a ladder that doesn't function or you'll see a, a dead corpse that should have something on it but doesn't and they also don't look like the like they don't have the same kind of quality of uh uh uniform as the, the actual npcs in this game it's an unusual thing but it doesn't happen very often and i don't find it really breaks my immersion too much so um you know, it is whatever. Uh, if you're curious if I've turned anything off, by the way, the only thing I've turned off is uh, there were helicopter patrols and also like this constant helicopter noise, um, which I did find broke my immersion because it was just like constantly like hitting me with this barrage of, of helicopter sounds. and It's just awful. So, ah, here's our first mutant. That would be a flesh. They can bleed out. So sometimes you don't actually have to put like a bazillion bullets in them. You could just like put a couple bullets in them and wait. Shot I heard a shotgun and cordon west of the farm. Uh, the little things in the bottom left are like, you know, real time. They're not actual players, just in case you were curious. Oh, wow. Nothing, huh? Interesting. Um... They are like real-time NPCs kind of like tracking things. So like actually if you are shooting something near a bandit base, you'll see a little a little thing pop up that says, hey guys, I just heard like, you know, SKS shots um, southwest of this area, you know, indicating to them that, you know, they, they, they are aware of you and you should probably make haste. So this is the cordon. The cordon has some pretty cool places in it um, to, to check out. It's not uh, the place we're going to... Oh. Uh, being radiated. Some nice stuff that guy had. Not sure what I'll do with it. It's not the place I want to end up in necessarily. Um, but it is the place we're going to go to now. And it's the place I'm going to end my episode in. Um, we're going to go here. The farm. It's a not a terrible place. And also, I actually have some stuff there already. Um you can you, you do kind of want to store stuff i had nothing stored uh back at the swamps area i kind of made a, a pilgrimage to this area so i do want to um have a look through my stuff and see if uh there's anything in there i can use swap out uh, i might do that between episodes but um yeah here's here's their farm um it's a it's, a, it's not a great farm but it is a tough farm it's been attacked a couple of times, even in my playthrough. I think I'm getting an infection. At least this guy had an AK-74 uh, for me. It's going to be a long day, isn't it? Different bandit. Here, are gunshots. Uh, we could definitely go check, you know, investigate those gunshots and maybe, like, try to turn the tide of some kind of conflict. Um, depending on if there are allies on one side. And then try and loot the bodies. The NPCs in this uh, overhaul pack are very loot happy. Uh, they will loot almost immediately as soon as there's a downed body, but um, not at the you know, risk of their own life, obviously, when when the conflict is clear. But I don't think I want to investigate that. Uh oh, that looks like a bad guy. Uh, did this place get com completely taken over?
These guys look like bad guys. Oh no, they have the uh, stalker symbol. You okay? Yeah, they're free stalkers. Okay. See, like I can't tell sometimes. Who am I kidding? I can't tell any time. I am like always at a loss as to like whether or not they're a good guy or bad guy. Um, here are our major traders in this, but actually let's have a quick look at my, um, stuff. This is my crate of stuff. I've got some stuff in here. Uh, I've got a thing of lock picks. I probably want to put some more stuff in here. Like, uh, maybe some of the, any of the 76225 I would like to put in there because these are things, these are bullets I want to convert into uh whatever this is 39 because i can't put 25 in our sks i can only put 39 so uh stuff like that is you know stuff i'd like to you know, we want to keep and see if we can't convert in the future um here's our basic tools we can use this to do something i, I don't know yet i have yet to kind of crack the um the crafting learning curve on this game just yet Unlikely to be suitable for advanced maintenance, but they could be useful in the hands of a thrifty technician. I'm definitely going to want to get some more toolkits um, because they uh, they're going to allow me to make repair kits, which will be a little bit more affordable for me long term. Um, so, you know, good to know. So I'm looking at this. This will increase. I can see when I hover over it, uh, it'll, it'll tell me how much it'll cost me to eat it obviously the flesh meat we don't want to we, we would like to cook that up first uh i was uh, telling a, a friend like you know um if if you want to play this game better better to eat mutant meat and uh take the medicine required to to kind of eat it than to buy food because food is expensive and the traders will absolutely scalp you for for the food so this is like mildly toxic moderate thirstiness increment sleep sleep this is actually not bad the lurker chops are pretty good moderately uh, uh toxic though this is this is gonna kill us if we don't take the appropriate medicine this stuff here is the appropriate medicine the antidote um so this stuff is actually not too bad in terms of cost uh you can see base cost 900 so probably it'll be like 1800 for a pack of these because you know they never charge you the base cost they always charge you like double or triple um but still buying a pack of those is way more cost effective because it means you can eat mutant meat without dying this guy will sell us some more stuff sunrise camouflage mod kit um i'm not gonna do any more like stuff here uh we're, what we're gonna do real quick before i end the stream is it not the stream the the recording is i would like to check the condition of our weapons and see if we can't maintain them a little bit sell stuff like flesh eyes i'll keep this flesh hide because it might be that we can actually use it to repair our our uh, vest i do probably need to get a new um knife at some point overcoat oh that's very expensive and maybe on the i think on the next episode we'll actually get our first quest and start doing the the sandbox thing roaming around and uh completing quests where we can uh maybe looting some bandits where we can um let me see here i can disassemble this stuff and i probably should anything with a gear symbol like that um means that we can disassemble we got like durable textiles that stuff is that's stuff that we can use to maybe craft with but i haven't really gotten to that part but i am you know trying to have a little bit of foresight and um keeping that stuff whenever i can because i know that it will be useful i know that crafting is going to be immensely valuable in the future um i meant to sell this and we can sell these too i i have a pack of bolts or at least like the one bolt so i don't need to i mean four rubles who cares but i wonder if i can put the cobra sight on the shotgun it tells me there what skype no I, I can't put the cobra on there i unfortunately can't put basically anything on the sk uh, the aks i will eventually want to um sell the aks in favor of a different uh ar rifle ar rifle no that doesn't make this assault rifle rifle <laughs> 
in favor of a better rifle. Let's put it that way. Um, so let's see if we can't repair our, the condition of our stuff. We're at 93. Um, so like if I use this, what would we get to? 100%. So we can, we want to use this until we get to like 85% and then use it because it's going to do repair like 15%. Uh, we don't want to use it before then. Might start repairing the shotgun. Shotguns in this game are amazing. Um, but you can see this, the condition, uh, look at the, if you look at the left side panel and look at the bottom of it, those are all of the parts that make up the shotgun. Um, you can see there are parts that are like highly damaged and some of them just like straight up need to be replaced But uh, seeing as I just got my SKS fully repaired. I don't think I want to um, You know spend the resources right now I I'd like to take a moment and appreciate where I'm at uh, without having to take on a new project but either way this will do it for our first official episode of stalker escape from Pripyat, but although it's technically the second episode sorry to be confusing like that but um you know i hope that you appreciate um what i'm trying to do here either way uh and we'll see what we can accomplish on the next episode maybe we can do some quests but anyway if you enjoyed this definitely hit that like button and consider subscribing for more content like this and i'll see you guys next time take it easy I'm <laughs> sorry.